But for me, I think I, Big Thunder is my favorite attraction in all of Disneyland because to me it, it is the definition of the best possible mix of, you know, uh, like thrill ride, roller coaster type deal and themed environment. Sometimes you can get one and not the other, or oftentimes, really. Uh, but I think this is the the actual the definition of how to how to do that. I mean, we're, we're going to ride a roller coaster here in a minute, but you wouldn't know it. <laughs> You'd think we're in the middle of Arizona right now, just going on a you know a mining expedition. But I, mean, I think it's an evolution of that you first saw through stuff like Matterhorn. Yeah, exactly. Now Matterhorn is another great example, uh, but but that that. When you compare that environment to this one, it doesn't even... Well, as I said, evolution. Right, exactly. Matterhorn is a, is a great way of mixing theme and, and thrill ride. Yeah. Uh, but they, they didn't have the space to do what they could do here at Big Thunder. Uh, I suppose if they had the opportunity, they, they could do Matterhorn better. Uh, give that to Tony Baxter, which they couldn't anymore because unfortunately he doesn't, he's not an active manager anymore. I think officially he acts as a consultant, but I don't know how often they actually call him to consult. I don't know why. Because if you know the Tony Baxter story a little bit, you know that he and Dizzy don't exactly get along. Um, well, I, you know, I just, I, why would you not appreciate that kind of, because, you know? Because that costs him more money. Well, okay. I don't, I, I, if, that segues to a, co a conversation that I wanted to have with Fresh Baked a little bit because if I'm like, let's say, speaking to both Fresh Baked and the Disney company. Uh, one of the reasons, and I, I don't want this to turn into like a what would Walt do type conversation because I don't really like to have that, you know, I don't like to pull that, that card, as it were. But one of the reasons why Disneyland worked to begin with because of Walt's vision was the fact that he wasn't afraid to throw money at it and he wasn't afraid to go broke. Walt was broke many times and uh, throughout Disney's evolution. And Tony would often, often really fight for certain, certain things to right. happen, even though they're possible. Look at how good these attractions are and how strong they are, because they they what what money they did have, they did give it to him. You know, they did make it right. Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones was, my goodness. Well, we can get into that, but you know that was that was another very ambitious project. Um, that didn't come to full fruition, but still, the result was still pretty great because they didn't cut corners I on the. They got to Tokyo, they're out there, except for the portions. Yeah.
<laughs> that was a good one. Look at this place. It's freaking majestic. In the middle of Anaheim, they built something this majestic. Yeah. I mean... Now, okay, so that... We left off a point but before we got on actual Big Thunder. If there was any message that I would like to convey, and this, this attraction is an example of, as we were saying, what could be done, is that... I know there's budgets. Okay, you gotta meet your budget. Just... Could you just make the budget bigger? Like, just, instead of the budget being 50 million, make it 60. Like... I know that seems a lot simplistic, but it's not as though they can't afford a budget of 60 million as opposed to 50, or 100 and 110, or whatever that number is. I don't know how much it costs to build an, an attraction these days, but we hear that a lot, that they get... You know, things don't happen, or things don't happen as well as we would like them to because of budget reasons. And that just seems like a cop-out. Don't you think? Like, like so, as, if, as if somebody bestowed the budget upon Disney. Like, somebody said, Disney, you can only spend this much. Yay, capitalism! Right? I mean... <laughs> Disney's in charge of their own budgets. Such, you know, just... God. Am I out of line? And Ex execs, mid-level, and I will want those bonuses. Okay, but so who sets the bonuses? Top level? I don't know. I'll that. Look at there is just magic happening everywhere. There's a train coming right here. We saw one of those go right by as we were on the Big Thunder too, which was weird or new. Uh, okay, so understood that mid-level management wants to meet those budget so that they can get their bonus. So how about next level management? Oh, make it, you mean Chapit, the guy? Whoever, yeah. That's, you know what I'm asking for is our next, our next park president. The man who is in charge, well that's already been established. It's a younger guy, right? Uh, I, get the I forget his name. Park president, but Chapit is the head of the Parks and Resorts and yes. Consumer Products Division since they shuffle things around. Now does he, does he manage the budgets for each park, or, or does the Disneyland president get to make his own budgets, I wonder? As someone who doesn't work as a CEO, or program, I would not know. Well, that's what I'm asking. It's whoever it is that's in charge of setting the budget, the actual final say. I mean, wait, you can, don't kid me. Don't try to tell me that you guys are under threat of going broke. <laughs> okay? You're not, they're not going broke anytime soon. Oh, no. No. They're, matter of fact, Disney parks are one of the biggest earners. It's, yeah, it's their... It's, 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 I think it's number one, isn't it? Yeah, even for as well as the studios have been doing... The studios are, are doing still, nothing compared to what Disney Parks, Parks is doing. And the studios have been doing well lately. They too. have. Billion dollars left and right. Yeah. Uh, and the Parks are still pulling ahead of that. ESPN by itself does more than the, than, uh, than the studios do. Or at least it used to. Not, maybe not anymore, but... Uh, anyway, well, I guess my point is, is they're, they're in no danger of not making a profit or even providing profit to their investors. I understand that investors want to see a certain amount of growth, um, but even that is a, that's kind of like chasing the dragon a little bit when you start, you can't, you can't grow always. There has to be some decline. Like I said, gay capitalism. Right, you can only fit so many people in this park. And that's the only way you make more money is to get more people in here to spend it. Uh, so at some point you have to expect at least a leveling off of growth, right? There's yep. that, there has to be a, an end. Which is why you start seeing more push towards a per, more per capita spending with all the upsell stuff. Right, stuff. Exactly. Or so how can we get expanding. More existing people here? Yeah. Which I'm okay with that, to be honest. In that sense. That it, it, but well, I, I, would t I would take that. I would accept that with more glee if they would just put more money into the park. Well, I do want to add the, the addendum of including the cast members. That too, yes, of course. Uh, that's an easy argument, though. I mean, there's really... Uh, I know, nobody's saying. dying on the hill of, you know, screw the cast members. You'd, you'd be surprised. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hear the argument, if you want to make more money, go work somebody else or go work somewhere else. I hear that, which 
I mean, it sounds easy to say on, you know, on the face of it, but some people like to work here. They want to do this for, for us, and they want to provide us that experience. They also already work in those school jobs. That's true. Also trying to work jobs and go to school. So changing jobs is not necessarily as simple. Yeah. So. No, I want everybody to make more money, and I want Disney to make money too. But I, I'm just saying, you can give us a little bit. You can you can do stuff. You can you can build attractions like Big Thunder. You don't. Why wait for Star Wars Land? Because I have a feeling we're going to get what we want out of Galaxy's Edge. It'd be for, they're certainly talking it, yeah. we, but we won't know for sure until it actually actually opens. But they I, certainly I mean, just, yeah, all the early, all the early indicators suggest that we're going to get a complete land. Yes. We're going to get a fully immersed environment. They're, they 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 are trying hard, but don't wait. Like you can see, for example, that they're waiting to do something with Tomorrowland. You know. Uh, even just the fact they put off the parking structure for so long until they could. That too, right? Like infrastructure. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and spend a little bit more. Just go ahead. And I, I, it seems like an easy thing to say, and, I, and I, I, I'm obviously, I'm not cut out to be a, a park president or anything like that. Or maybe I could, who knows. But I just feel like we deserve to get a little more money put into these projects, a little more into the budget. If, you're, if your excuse is it's not in the budget, then give me a freaking bigger budget. Okay, that's, that's all I'm saying. And not by a lot but enough to do some of the extra things that we're not getting. Yeah. You know, there are like there was a plan for a third attraction at Galaxy's Land that wasn't like a major thing. Yep. They they scrapped it. Not in the budget. Well, Ian and I just uh, finished taking a look again at our new favorite location, uh, Chippendale's Treehouse for our but Galaxy's I mean, Edge your update. Favorite location. Our new favorite location. Ian said, I'm David. Not, I'm not taking ownership. Why haven't we been to Toontown already to get a look at that? at that wonderful view of Galaxy's Edge. Message. Ian does not endorse any part of the Galaxy's Edge update anymore, does he? <laughs> Mostly just because the skin, so you just getting hard, hard to see stuff. I'm like, yeah. okay. It's not, again, it's not that I'm not fascinated by the process, but when you can't actually see much of it, I, you, it because they're trying to stop you right. from seeing it, yeah. it's like, okay, oh, they I sure are. have to wait, right? They like, sure are making it difficult for us. Like, I will gladly read and watch every behind the scenes documentary after it comes opens. Yep. Oh, yep. <laughs> well, they're making it really hard effort to not let people see the progress. I think it would be better, so, a choice on their part, to make it more visible for us, yeah. I think. I mean, it's weird because they do these, like, panels at, like, Galactic Nights yeah. or Star Wars Nights. Right, everybody's geeked about it. But, and you get, like, maybe a handful of new pictures yeah. and, like, two lines of information and that's it. Yeah. But they no, should be, like, they should really be, significantly new info. I think it builds up a lot of excitement for the new land. Uh, they should yeah. welcome it. Well, in any case, um, we're in. We're just leaving Toontown. I think we're gonna have lunch today over here at the Troubadour. There was a gentleman who uh, had offered to get us lunch today uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't make it. I'm starving. It's like 11:45. I'm starving, and uh, we need to eat. And we're on the other side of the park, so we're gonna go here to the Troubadour, which has one of my favorite things of all time. The uh, is it now? Is this the chicken sausage or is this a regular sausage dog I've that they have? I've had it, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, they've got, they've got uh, pretzel bites with cheese, baked potatoes, and... Uh, and match a very magical the, map. And, the, and yeah, you get to enjoy a show on the periphery if you time it right, which we have, apparently. So I'm sorry we couldn't make it to lunch today over at the Hungry Bear, but uh, we'll get you next time. Let's get, uh, let's get that dog. Here. Not that I'm getting one, but they don't usually serve those here. Well, that is our serenade for our lunch, which has been served. Ian's standing by. Look at that. We got two bratwurst. It's, it's bratwurst is what that is. Um, you can so have both sauerkrauts. I'm not Ian a is not guy. a fan of kraut, apparently. I am. I do love some kraut. And we need some mustard. We also got some uh, pretzel bites with cheese. A cherry and apple frozen cherry with Cherry apple frozen. With an apple chip on there. 
Yes, uh, like a slush, I guess, right? Yep. Those are, those are really tart, right? This one's a good, pretty sweet. It's sweet? Yeah. yeah? All right. Well, let's, uh, let's do it. Well, guys, lunch is complete at the uh, Fantasyland Theater, the Troubadour. That one? Troubadour something. Troubadour Tavern? Yep. That sounds right. It was really good. I love pretzel bites with cheese. You know what? It's kind of like pizza for me. There is really no bad pizza. I mean, some pizza's better than others, but I'm always down for pizza of any kind. I'm always down for pretzel bites with cheese of any kind, of any varying degree of quality. They're just good. Pretzels are good. You know what? You know what? what about pretzel sticks? They're all right. Yeah. They're okay, but you can get tired of those in a, in a hurry, huh? Yeah. You need they some. They're filling all the gaps in your teeth. Yeah. You gotta What's wash up with that? that? You gotta wash it off. What's up with that pretzel industry? You gotta mix in some M&Ms or some Chex Mix. We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out some of our other videos and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. We truly are the best of Disney Bake Fresh daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Fresh baked.